Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Miguel Angel Ajo. Uh, I, I work at uh, Emerging Technologies Office of the CTO uh, at Red Hat. And I will be talking today about Jumpstarter, uh, which is a tool to enable uh, doing hardware in the loop testing. Um, so, but before I start talking about uh, Jumpstarter, just a side uh, community related to this. Uh, recently, I, I worked with uh, engineers from Malena and other companies to start a small community that we have called Open Hardware in the Loop Community. Um, and if anybody watching is interested in this topic, uh, please join us. We are a very small and friendly community of enthusiasts. Uh, so we have Balena, uh, Red Hat, uh, somebody from a company called Exact Assembly that makes hardware, uh, some uh, Jenkins uh, contributor from CloudBees, and recently we had some people from a company called CodeSync that makes something called uh, text testing in a box, which is a project similar to Jamstarter. So we, as a community, we had many, many issues uh, figuring out how to, how to do hardware in the loop. And we saw that everybody was reinventing the same thing once and again, that there was no <coughs> standard documentation. Uh, and sometimes the tools that you find are proprietary and super expensive. So yeah, we have a set of goals like collecting documentation, best practices, um, and finding venues like this one that um, are interested in this topic, and maybe creating a standards for test rigs like this. So this is uh, the link to the community if you want to see it. Um, so before I start with, with Jams, oh, what happened? <laughs> before I start with uh, Jamstarter, uh, something that we didn't realize when we started the project was that there were already other um, other projects uh, in the in the ecosystem for doing hardware in the loop uh, in an open way, um, and they they look at this from from different angles. Some of them, AutoKit, for example, is is from Malena and they define like the, like the test rig and then they have like a set of software that is very specific to them. It's very specific to, to the Balena OS and, and how they test it for lots of devices. There is also LabGrid, which is meant for a more mixed uh, environment uh, with embedded devices, but also uh, electronics and so on, and has some, it's, very similar to what we are trying to do with uh, Jamstarter, but they started uh, like 10 years ago, and yeah, they, I mean, they, they have some things that we believe maybe will not fit in, in the enterprise world. There is also Lava uh, from uh, the Linaro Foundation, uh, OpenDUT that works, uh, it, it's a project from different auto vendors and really focused on testing um, vehicle, vehicle uh, equipment, then testing in a box, and probably others. <laughs> and inside Red Hat, I mean, we have Beaker, which could be something similar if it was not only for servers. So, okay, back to Jumpstarter. Um, uh, my friend Ricardo created this, this small story about Pinat, uh, the developer, who works on uh, on edge devices, and he is really used to the to the uh, today's frameworks and, and methodologies to to create applications. Uh, he uses Git. Uh, he builds on the cloud. He creates containers. He has uh, all kinds of testing frameworks. Uh, but then, when he has finished the development of of his application that he's building, he needs to test on the device. So yeah, he has to connect the power adapter, then the Ethernet, then maybe he will need the video output. Uh, he has to write a flash drive to boot the device with the image that he built. 
And then by the end of the day, Pinat is completely exhausted. Um, so, yeah, we wanted to help uh, Pinat with this project. So, uh, um, the origins of, of Jan Starter is, is uh, trying to, to help with testing uh, embedded devices. So you are building images and you are building applications that are supposed to run on an embedded device, but you are testing uh, manually, uh, you are going to miss many issues that will uh, happen along the development process. Um, I mean, it, it would be ideal to be able to test on your device for every change that you make on your code base, or if you have, maybe not all of your devices are the same version of the hardware, maybe you have variations uh, because yeah, change happens and you need more uh, powerful hardware or it does not exist anymore. So you need to test your software on all of them. Um, so this is uh, one of the goals that we want to help uh, with. And also, it was not the initial goal, but then we found that it was super useful for doing local development. Uh, it, it helps you to, to keep uh, your testing rigs side by side with you or in the lab and, and then be able to, to test on the device very quickly. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, the, the idea of the Jamstarter software. Today is written in Golang, but we are considering a migration to, to Python. I will explain why later. Um, we have the concept of uh, devices and, and drivers. So the idea is that, I mean, we have this hardware that I will talk about later, but you could have anything else controlling your devices. Uh, we provide a, a testing, uh, sim simple testing script language to define how do you test on the device. And we can do things like managing the power, measuring the power that your device is consuming while it's running. Uh, we can control some signals, we can control the storage, and we can access the console so far. But yeah, we have plans to, to make more, more drivers. So how, how will this look if we use a jump starter to test from GitHub Actions, for example? We will, um, you know, this works. Oh, yeah. So, um, so we will have GitHub, and we will have a GitHub runner that has, um, that can run the jump starter software. And if, if your driver needs like di directly attached hardware, um, you will have that hardware attached to your runner. And then um, in that self-hosted runner that you have connected to, to GitHub, you will give it a tag saying, okay, uh, on this runner I have Jumpstarter and I have Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so then this is how, um, how your uh, GitHub action script will look like. You will just be talking to, to Jumpstarter. Uh, it's already installed on the host. Uh, this example is just listing devices, uh, downloading, uh, um, I don't know which one was that. I think I have an example for a Fedora ima image or a Raspbian image. So it's going to download the image, prepare the image by installing uh, the application, and then we can run a script to test it on the hardware. In this case, it was testing uh, that the drivers for a TPM were working on our device. And we have a, so far it's a very simple YAML format, and yeah, we, we are looking into uh, making this more, more capable, but so far uh, the, the script is, yeah, is quite simple. You can select, uh, types of devices by tag. So if you had many of them connected to, to this runner, the runner, uh, uh, the Jumpstarter uh, 
command line will pick a, an available one that is not being used by any other instance of the runner, and yeah, it will execute this, like power off, write the disk image that you generated, connect the storage into the device, um, and then it will be waiting for this, waiting for, yeah, uh, and, and interacting on the, on the serial console of, of the device. Um, just a cautionary slide, if you, uh, if you use something like this in GitHub, please make sure that you go and set uh, this uh, require approval for all outside uh, collaborators so the, the workflows will not run automatically. You can inspect them before because at least today um, you need uh, root access to execute, to, to use your starter with, with this hardware, for example, in your runner. So, yeah, we are looking for ways to improve that and remove that necessity. So. Yeah, as I said, uh, we have like a driver-based architecture that will let you use like a set of, like a testing rig. Uh, we call it a testing harness, actually. And a testing harness can be something that is going to let you uh, provide the storage for the device. In, in this case, this is the device under test, and the red part is the testing rig. Um, and control the power and have a serial console. That's like the, the minimum. Um, so we have one driver, for example, that works with this device that is called an SD, uh, uh, SD wire uh, that lets you control an SD card via USB, write to the SD card, and then give it to the device. It's, uh, the SD card is actually behind this. And then a smart socket and a USB to serial cable. With those three components, you can control the device and, and test on the device. So, at the start, yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't know that this piece of hardware existed. So, we created like an open source uh, testing uh, harness. Uh, which is on, in, in the format of mini ITX. So the idea is that you could get two, two of those and put them together in a, in a standard rack, server rack case. Um, it can do power control of the device under test, control the power. Uh, it can do power metering, so you can know while you're testing how much power is consuming. Uh, and then it has some extra connections for, for staff, some um, GPIO and uh, control signals, and the most important part, the, the USB storage uh, switching. So you can write to a storage device from the testing host and then connect that device to the device under test and boot it from there, which is normally very, very quick. So yeah, this is uh, the previous version to this one, and a Vision 5 mounted on, on top. And yeah, the best part of using USB 3 is that uh, it's super fast to write the, the disk image and then reboot, maybe you need 30 seconds normally. Not in what I would show today, because sadly this is running, I'm running it in a, a QMO uh, virtual machine, and through Mac OS, it's not great. <laughs> so, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we made some iterations on, on the hardware, so the first version was the simplest proof of concept, and it, mm -hmm. making prototypes was around this cost. Then we made some improvements based on, fit, on feedback, which is that one. And then we have another version that we designed, but we didn't make yet. Uh, because yeah, we didn't have the time and, and the budget, and it went a little bit more expensive. But we, we, I mean, we had many capabilities instead of needing. So the previous version needs two connections to the host. You need this one for control, and you need this one to access the USB storage and write to the USB storage. So it, it means that you need two, two connections. But with this version. 
you can just use one USB 3 uh, super speed connection and that's all. Uh, that is going to give you access to, to the storage for the device, that is going to give you access to a small controller that we have here that is written in, uh, in Rust. And you can also connect additional USB devices. Maybe you, you have a video, you, you want to capture video, or you want to provide a canvas interface because your device has a canvas, uh, anything else, a JTAG programmer, anything that you need to work with your device. Um, so yeah, the firmware for, for this is written in, in Rust. And just, just a note, we use uh, to distribute the, the firmware for, for this chip on, on, on the test harness. We use a project uh, also uh, from Red Hat called Firmware Update that is running on every Fedora, every real uh, system that allows, it has a CDN to distribute firmware so you can upload, uh, you, you can test it, um, and, and then it's distributed to every device that has uh, this connected to the system. Um, yeah, just talking a, a little bit about um, the idea of open hardware here. We, I mean, at Red Hat we are not interested in making hardware. We only made this as a tool to enable communities to, to use this software. Uh, and as an example, maybe to others. But even, we don't build it, but you can go to a company like this, see the studio, and you can click, and they will give you a quote, uh, okay, I want five, they give you a quote, they make five for you, and they send them, which is pretty nice. So, yeah, this is, I mean, this is how it looks if you interact with the Jumpstarter uh, command line tool on, on a console. Um, so you can list devices if you have multiple connected or configured. So you can have different drivers. Um, and you can, they have tags, so you can select them from tests. And yeah, you can, you can, you can uh, write the, um, uh, a disk image for the device to, to use. Uh, you will see in the demo later that it's slower, <laughs> but it's QMUS and Mac OS fault. Um, yeah, you can, you can, I mean, you can do all those things manually or you can do them on a script. You can power on, you can get a console to the device and then you can run the, the script. So I'm going to go into the demo, and let's see. So yeah, I have, you see here, I have a few repositories, one testing these on Fedora 40, Fedora Rawhide, and Raspbian Lite. So if I go to this bit on the Fedora 40, I have a few make file targets. Uh, one to to, pre to download the image, prepare the image, um, and then I have one to test in hardware. This one, it's a fake target. Yeah, but so if I run make test in hardware. I will skip the preparation of the image and so on. This is what uh, a GitLab runner would be running. Again, this is very slow to detect the USB device for some reason with QEMU and the macOS layer. Uh, it, <laughs> it's a little bit terrible so far, but yeah, let me, let me show you what the script is going to do so in the meanwhile. So, I'm going to, it's going to power up the device, it's going to write the, the image that we created with our application, in this case just making sure that the, that the TPM module works, we power on, um, and then it's interacting with the console going through the Fedora setup. And then at some point it's going to install, or try to, because I don't know if network will be, will be working for us. Um, we're going to try to install the TPM tools and then do some interaction with the TPM module to make sure that we can access it. This is connected here, and for that to work, you need um, 
you need to configure in this case the Raspberry Pi boot uh, for enabling that. So let's see if it's, it's on it. Okay, it's it detected the the USB storage device. It's great into the device before giving it to 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 the device under test. And let's see. It works. I can show you maybe a little bit of what I'm doing in the preparation of the image in this case. Yeah, it's 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 a very simple example, but I, I'm just modifying the I'm mounting the image, changing the command line to to use the serial console on the pins, uh, adding a user. Or well, I was trying to add a user, but that didn't work. Um, and then configuring the, the boot process to, to enable the SPI bus and the TPM. So, yeah, it's almost finishing. Yeah, so once the, um, I don't know, you can see the screen. Once the disk is written, it's going to eject it from the host and connect it to, to the device. And now the device is booting. It has attached the storage. And this is a Raspberry Pi bootloader going through stuff. I think it's configured to try to boot from the SD card and if the SD card is not there, it will try to boot from the USB device. So yeah, now it's on the USB device. And uh, yeah, this is group. So at this point, the script is I think it's waiting for this make a selection from the above because we know that that will eventually happen with Fedora. It's a lot of output. Anyway, this is Fedora server that is not super, uh, I mean, maybe it's not the best idea for a Raspberry Pi, but it was the easiest for, for the demo. Yeah, so it was waiting for that, and now it's interacting in the console with the, um, with the Fedora system. Now it's waiting for the login, and now it's going to login. And the, this is where I don't know if it, oh, the network is working. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> so now it's going to download the TPM uh, utilities. Yeah, ideally, you were going to test an image probably all those utilities are already built on the image. You just flash it and, and run the tests. Um, yeah, but I wanted to show like some, some interaction with the, with the device. So now we have the, the TPM tools and, and now it's using the TPM to create some key. And yeah, I don't remember what I did at this point. I think I was uh, signing a message and then verifying the signature. So it's it's doing that with the TPM. So if the all my all the drivers are working properly, it should it should be okay. It worked. So now the next thing that is doing is, is ask the system to power off and it will eventually power off the device. But 
having this in a in a um, in a GitHub runner, for example, will allow us to detect things like this. In, in this example, uh, somebody, well, it was me actually, I was modifying the, <laughs> I was modifying the prepare image script and I removed the DTV overlay on the config. So once, and, and I was doing that only for Raspbian. So what happened? The test for Raspbian light, uh, light failed. So with that, you get the idea of uh, having your hardware fully integrated into CI. And yeah, I can, after this demo part, that maybe was the most interesting. Yeah, we can see that now Pinat and his friends are much happier, and more, much more productive. They can just keep coding and not switching wires and USB sticks around. And yeah, I, we want to do more things uh, with this project. Uh, we want to cover more, more use cases uh, that we have found from, from customers. We are considering to move to Python because we found out that most of the ecosystem uh, for this is written in Python, so it will be easier to integrate with those other things. Some people is wanting to do hardware, this kind of hardware testing from Jupyter notebooks. Um, and, but the, it has some cons. Um, yeah, I guess if Python uh, is harder to distribute, you cannot just build a binary and, and share it around. And we are also looking into distributed architectures, maybe where you can have um, devices connecting to a central <laughs> server and then being able to, to talk to that server and say, okay, give me a device, whatever is in, in the lab, I want to test. I want to run my test in there. Um, this is, you know, at the bottom is the current model, and some other advantages of migrating to Python, so you could do things with, directly with Python tests. If you want to do more complicated things, I don't know, talking to a canvas, reading a video file, and making sure that the image is what you wanted. And yeah, we want to support many many drivers in the architecture because there are many use cases, but yeah, we'll start by the simplest one. And that's it. I don't know if you have any questions, but thank you very much for <laughs> staying with me. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that far so uh, is, oh, sorry, yeah, so the question was how, I mean, the, I, I have presented how we will write an image and how we will uh, manage the device, but if I had like a battery of tests, how would you really do that? Um, and so far, I mean, the tests that we can do with the current version, which is the first one, mostly like a proof of concept, uh, is very simple. It's all done via console interaction, so you just you have to run commands on the device. Uh, but yeah, there are probably many better ways of doing that. I mean, maybe you could run an agent and talk to the agent that is going to run your test, or some tests could involve talking to multiple devices at the same time because maybe, I mean, you need to talk via radio or via some other bus. So that is where maybe being able to write tests in Python could be more powerful because you could, I mean, you could do it programmatically instead of using a very simple YAML that is talking to the console. I don't know if that's answering the question or not. Yeah, this, this is what we are doing now. But yeah, they, this like the simple smoke test <laughs> to see if we could do this. Thank you. This project is only relevant to real actual hardware, right? For example, if I want to use pure M instead of 
that, that is a question that we had before. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's meant for doing this in, in real hardware because it's where it is most needed. Like, uh, for example, in that we are looking at using it uh, for, for certification of edge devices. If, if, we can, if we can use it for that and to do it continuously. And we, we already had some certification that does that <coughs> continuously on servers, but we have already management. I mean, servers normally have out of band management. So I had this, that question before. For example, we will have a driver for QEMU. That will not be very complicated. So maybe you have a, in, in, the, in the list of drivers, in, the, in the, this, uh, where we have different types of, of drivers, we will have one for QEMU, for example. So your device will be virtual. No, 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 it doesn't exist. For example, that, that's something that the people from Valena, they told me they do, because at some point they had to test in specific devices, but they could not get them. But there were like QEMU profiles for those devices, so they were just using QEMU with a profile. Yeah, but it's, yeah, I had that question before. Sorry. Uh, can you repeat, sorry? Uh, how you actually define what happens like if the device is not responding or like the whole system just crashes? You cannot push crashes. Yeah, so currently if, um, yeah, the tests are, are very simple. It, it has like a timeout, you define a timeout on the test. If any, you have like a general timeout on the script and if that timeout is reached and the device is not responding, it's going to fail the test. Uh, if, but then some actions can be, can, can specify like shorter or longer timeouts. Yeah. This is what we do now. So if that happens, it will fail and it will uh, jump into the, so we have, you see at, the, uh, at some point here, yeah, it's, it's jumping into the, the cleanup phase. So all the scripts have a cleanup phase. So if something goes wrong, it's going to try to power off uh, via software, and then hardware, it will disconnect the, the power from the device. Yeah, so, so it, it needs some, I mean, with this specific uh, test rig, uh, it, I mean, you need power and you need your device to be able to boot from USB and to have like a TTL console at least. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we are also, we, sorry, we have also been asked for other use cases where maybe your device is not booting from USB. Maybe you have a JTAG programmer that is going to flash the firmware and then you are going to test on the device. Uh, so with, um, with a better driver architecture and, and Python that will be more modular and more, uh, you will be able to write more granular tests and not just YAML, uh, we could do something like that. But also, I mean, if you need something now, you also have LabGrid. LabGrid is, is similar to this. It, I mean, it has some architectural decisions that make, makes it hard for bigger enterprises, like in terms of security, uh, it's a little bit um, weak, but you can do things like that already. If you need something. It's possible to request like new hardware configuration. So, for example, if I'm interested to bring some CI or APK CS11 token with flags to the USB, is there a procedure to say, hey, I have these requirements, so I would like to contribute a new driver uh, with this? Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no, not, not currently, but um, I mean, part of the, of the ideas uh, that we have is making a driver architecture where you could do many things. Um, one thing could be remote controlling a USB device that you connect to, well, you, you could do that now with the USB switcher that we have. Uh, you could connect the PKACS token to the host and then connect the PKACS token to the device. Uh, you have uh, also USB switchers that are what we integrated there. Uh, it's just a, a device where you connect uh, a USB device. It's like a USB hub, but a little bit smarter. So you have one control interface and you have one interface that goes to the host, one interface that goes to the device, and then you plug the device that you want to manage. So you can connect it to the host, do something with that, connect it to the device, and the device will use it. So yeah, things there like that. Yeah, there are possibilities. And also we had the idea of, at some point, you could even emulate uh, USB devices via the network for the device under test, but yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.